Well, thanks very much for all of you who are staying after, for the very last presentation, after three days of fascinating presentations. I'm not going to talk to you about open science, as it would be a very sorry tale. We find it very difficult to convince our researcher to uh, put uh, their uh, research product in our institutional repository. So we're going to go back to the usual uh, library um, and uh, we're going to talk about how we chose and uh, implement, implemented uh, this, uh, the EDS discovery tool at Hebrew University. We did it in a slightly uh, different way. Who are we? First, a couple of minutes to tell you who we are. Uh, Israel had, it has eight universities and 60 colleges. We only have eight million people uh, population. I know we make a lot of noise, but uh, it's only eight uh, million. We have many, many colleges that are now uh, do giving uh, first and second degrees, but basically eight research universities. Oh, let's try with this one. Uh, the Hebrew University, was, uh, where I come from, was founded in 1925 by visionaries such as Albert Einstein, as that you can see, he serves as our mascot. You can see pictures of him all over our campuses. Um, today, it's located on, three, on four campuses, in fact, three in Jerusalem and the fourth one not far from there. Uh, our university uh, is not a very big university, but uh, it's a research university. We have 23,000 students. Uh, nearly 40% of, uh, and it's very much a research university, uh, we have um, about 3,000 doctoral students and uh, 7,000 uh, second degree students. The rest are 11,000 are undergraduates and the university would like to have less if possible because they don't like teaching, they just like doing the research. Uh, we have a lot of research projects, and uh, here you have a picture of uh, Professor Martha Rosin, who found uh, a drug called Excellent, for, who is supposed to help with Alzheimer. She, uh, but we also, for example, have Aleph. Some of you must be, might be using Aleph of Ex Libris. Aleph was uh, uh, written for the Hebrew University libraries in the early 1980s. Our libraries, you know, we all heard about all the libraries wanting to disappear, but we still have eight libraries with the library authority. That's uh, where I'm the chief librarian. We have eight, eight libraries on four campuses and the Albert Einstein archive. We all heard about the libraries disappearing and um, they were told us a few years ago that we probably wouldn't be around for very long, considering that uh, everything is going on the internet, like they say, and every, everything will be free, so we have no problem. Unfortunately, that didn't happen yet, and we still have to buy a lot of our uh, resources. We still have to supply, and we pay a lot of money until all the open science uh, uh, initiative or movement succeeds, we'll still have to provide the resources. And we learn also about the changing learning habits. And what we did is try to change our libraries so that we could uh, have still the right to exist. That's the libraries just before we did the transformations. You see the shelves for uh, current uh, journals getting empty. And now we took all the uh, places of the journals and changed it and made it into uh, places where students can study. You still have various ways of sitting, like studying alone, studying together, very classical or very modern libraries. We have many rooms that are very popular with bean bags where the students can rest. Um, and we have cultural events. If you can see here on, on uh, the, uh, this, um, 
on this uh, picture, you can see students that came to watch a film in a library and they're sitting on the bookshelves because there was no room anymore for them. So we have a mission, a mission to get the the, to give what they need or what they don't need, to what they don't think they need to all our researchers, teachers, and students, and we try to do it the best way we can. We just did a survey now, really, uh, Last week, I looked at the results and I saw the first results. We asked, what is your starting point when you look for material? And 36% of the survey was of faculty and PhD students. 36% of the students of the survey people answered Google or Google Scholar. So why do we bother? Maybe we should stay with Google Scholar. It's free. It would save us some money. It's user-friendly. It has a link with our catalog. We all know, we all like and use Google. But we're trying to say, why not Google Scholar? Because we don't really know what is Google Scholar. We don't really know what's included in Google Scholar. We don't really know how the algorithm works. They just change the, the algorithm. We don't know. And uh, on top of it, we uh, have no access to the indexing of their databases. We all know why we shouldn't have only Google Scholar. And on top of it, the worst part of it is that 20 services seem to be more important to Google than Google Scholar. If you go into Google, okay, you have those nine dots at the top, you go in, that's the second click, you see no Google Scholar, third click, no Google Scholar, only on the fourth click, it's hidden somewhere there, Google Scholar. And finally, we get to Google Scholar, we don't know how long is Google going to keep Google Scholar? So we couldn't really count on that. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a Google-like tool, simple, efficient, that will allow us to search as many resources as we can, all our resources, and that allows us to deal with the list of searches that we obtain in uh, as many ways as possible. We need a discovery layer for the catalog and a discovery tool at article level. And I give you these two because that's what we think. I know it's not the fashion. The fashion is to search everything in the, at the same time and to blend the results. We don't want to blend the results. And why? We know that uh, search patterns tell us that most people that search the catalog are searching for known items mainly. On the other hand, the people who search articles search by many by topics. And uh, this is, uh, I very recently received this from um, EBSCO. They did a, a survey of uh, logs from EDS, and they saw that for academics, academic institutions, over 70% of the searches are topical. Uh, so we decided that we'd have to have a certain solution. First of all, a new interface for the catalog. And uh, we chose uh, as the interface uh, an open source uh, program called ViewFind, which has been developed by librarians for librarians, as they say. It has been developed at the University of Villanova in the States, and several uh, uh, many universities actually chose to use this, um, this uh, interface for the catalog. Uh, and as you can see, it has the facets, it has everything. Okay, so we had the interface for the catalog. We started with that, and we decided, for the reasons I told you before, that the catalog and the discovery tools will be displayed side by side, also because I don't, I'm not too good at reading algorithm, but I think that the algorithm for searching the catalog should be different than the algorithm for searching articles. In searching the catalogs, we have well-written, well-done cataloging items. We subject indexed, etc. We don't need to search full text in the catalog. We can find the books we have, the journal titles. We can find the item for our course readings all in the catalog without a search, a research algorithm that will include full text searching, etc. cetera. Uh, so we decided, okay, we have a catalog search, now we're going to look for an 
article search uh, program. So we decided to choose a discovery tool, and when I speak about the discovery tool, I do not include the search for the catalog. In the catalog, just the search for articles. We, uh, we, we asked three suppliers of three different dif discovery tools to install the discovery tool on our, uh, on our catalog next to our um, view find uh, catalog, and we did a, a Okay, before I get to that, what did we need to check for the discovery tool? We needed to check the central index and the discovery layer. Of, as we know, uh, all discovery tools supplier boast of the incredible number of items they have in the central, central index. Um, I, I'm not sure that the quantity is the only criteria. You, we should consider, I think we should also consider the quality of what's being done, and of course, the quality of the metadata that's put on the uh, articles. And of course, uh, we have to look at the scope, if it covers everything we need. Some, data, some, meta, uh, some databases are not included in any uh, discovery tool that I know of, like SciFinder, for example. And um, some databases are included in some discovery tools and not in others. One database we meet, miss a lot in EDS is the dissertation and thesis from ProQuest, because it's a, I think it's a very important database. Um, so uh, we have uh, also to think of a level if they include thin metadata or thick metadata. The discovery layer, of course, should be good, fast, uh, convenient, uh, include fast sets and other tools for refining and using the results, and give us a quick connection to the full text via direct links, via open URL, maybe via uh, various uh, uh, programs that we, knew that, that we use at link resolvers. In our case, we, look, we use SFX by Xlibris. So we decided to do a survey. After have installing all our three uh, programs, we got uh, uh, reference librarians to do 10 searches on each tool and to grade each tool from five to one based on the relevance of results and on the um, uh, possibilities of dealing with the list of results. And after all the searches, we asked them to grade the UI. Uh, 31 research libra reference librarians did the searches, 257 searches, and EDS received the best result for relevance and for dealing with the list of results. The UI was, the results for the UIs were almost the same for all three tools. So, but that, to me, was a little bit less important. Then we got to the implementation. So uh, we had EDS on one side, Viewfind on the other side, based on Aleph, our ILS is Aleph of Ex Libris, and we got what we called HUFind or UFind, uh, which I liked. <laughs> uh, the EDS uh, module for Viewfind uh, was uh, added by EBSCO, uh, search uh, capabilities to the existing Viewfind installation. And the model was prepared by EBSCO and sent to us uh, with detailed instruction of how to use it. And then we started the QA. Uh, we asked them to change several things, and it was done. And this is our red mine where you, we used to uh, follow up the QA. What were the final results? We have a search box. You can see it here. And it appears on all of our uh, web pages, uh, including the web pages of each different libraries. This, this on the side here is the list of our various libraries. And we do uh, three kinds of searches. One is a combined search. Oh. That's, uh, I, did, I don't know why I always search for global warming, but anyway. Uh, this is the results you get on your first search. You have on one side the library catalog, on the other side, the article and more. 
as you can see, you don't have facets or any way to deal with the results from this screen. Because, of course, it's not the same facets and it's not the same thing. But uh, if you search for something specific, you might find it on this screen. Uh, another, then you go into the library catalog, you get the facets, and you can use it as, uh, as you wish. If you go into EBSCO, you have a few, uh, into EDS, I mean, you have here various, uh, various uh, ways to look at it. You have uh, on the top a research starter, with, which helps you to know what you're searching. Very useful for young students, undergraduates, that would like to know what they're looking for. And afterwards, you have the various uh, results where you can take the results and uh, exchange and, and refine them by all these facets that you have on the side. Uh, you can also do something that's quite interesting if you want to refine your results in a more general way, you can look at the disciplines. They have uh, included in the EDS uh, uh, classification by disciplines, which can help you if you want to, uh, to define your results and uh, be more personalized your results. You could also build profiles on these, uh, on these, on these uh, based on these uh, disciplines. And once you, have the, uh, once you have the results you want and you find something, you can either go to the PDF, if it's included, if you have a direct link to the PDF. If not, you go into the SFX, the link resolver, and from there you just go to the full text. So that's quite easy to arrive to the full text. Now, what's the next step? Uh, EBSCO is now working on what's called a concept or a search. They want to have additional retrieval precision, especially for searches by concept, but for explore, exploratory searches. And they're ingesting over 100 thesauri and mapping search terms so they can get to more uh, precise results in their uh, searches. Uh, as a conclusion, I wanted to, I brought you the statistics from where we first applied the uh, EDS, uh, Viewfind plus EDS, and you can see that the, there was a jump from February when we sold the program to April, and now, now today we have about 31 million searches per year in our catalog plus EDS. And... Mm, I'm pressing the wrong button. No, one before, and before, okay. The statistics uh, from EBSCO, we had EBSCO host before we, have, we had the EDS, and in February of 2014, when we uh, put on the EDS, we saw a sudden jump of searches of uh, EBSCO material as well. So it helped us to uh, get into uh, more searches of, uh, of all of that. And what I can tell you as far as pluses and minuses go, the quality of metadata is excellent and this is, gives us a relevance of results that is quite high. It's not that easy to get relevant results when you're searching in full text and in articles, as you probably all know. So this Actually, the relevance here is very good. The access to full text is very convenient, and there is an easy manipulation of the result list. And one thing that's very important, I think, is the interoperability with other systems. I think that we don't have to be into one system, one provider. We can certainly have an interoperability of systems which allow us to choose the best for each kind of system. And um, that's very, very important, I think. Uh, what the minuses part is, some databases are still missing. I mentioned before the dissertation and thesis uh, by ProQuest, which is still missing. EBSCO is making some effort to put in even our Hebrew databases, which are not 
you know, uh, all over the world, but just for us, and we've got a lot of that, but still the dissertation and thesis, for example, is quite important. I would like to see a better interface for the reports of usage reports that they have, and I would, have, I would like to be able to do more things on the admin to have more permissions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much indeed for this um, presenting this very neat solution, I think. So we have two minutes for questions. No questions. I have a question. Um, so you mentioned that the differentiating result of your survey was basically the, the, the search, uh, the ranking algorithm of, yes. the, of the search results, right? So could you expand a little bit on what were the weaknesses of the other tools you, uh, you were analyzing? The research, the results was not as relevant. We got the reference librarian to classify the relevance of results. We did it on purpose with, with uh, uh, librarians and not with the public. And we saw that uh, basically we didn't get such good results. So we did, that's, that, that's what made up our decision. Only the, I mean, mainly the relevance and the ability to manipulate the list of results. The interface was less important because we figured that we probably could change the interface. Uh, not so, it wasn't so difficult to change the interface. All right, any more questions? Then let's thank Edith again.